with that, could you talk about magnetism? And not just only for working with the bodies, but in terms of um, in the cosmos, what is what are the laws of magnetism? And not just attraction and repulsion, but the cosmic. Yes, well, the cosmic <laughs> is <laughs> that everything is related to everything, as the Chinese would say. Uh, and even some of the great scientists ha have said that too. Uh, I, and so what happens in the cosmos is that there is not only like attracts like and opposites attract, there are all of those energies, but there's a sense of purpose. So when we talk about the theory of chaos, it's because we don't understand, we can't look into the elements of the cosmos. And uh, as Britt would say, you know, uh, we are born of the cosmos. The cosmos are our relatives. And, our energies, all these stars, all this energy. So uh, in the cosmos, magnetism is this building uh, energies that, which is interesting, that relate to when you put this thing with this thing, something new happens, fusion happens in the cosmos. And here we humans are just now trying to figure out uh, the laws of fusion. And if we could expand and participate in cosmic flow and cosmic energies, we will begin to understand what fusion is and how it occurs. And I remember when Britt was teaching cosmology, he talked about cosmic events, and it really impressed me that he said, there was a time when the first element uh, realized that it could combine with another element and, and, and life would occur, or, or more life would occur, or new life would occur. Uh, uh, a symbiotic relationship. It occurred in the cosmos. It's our own history. And the first time that these little entities, whether you call them uh, unicells or whatever they are, realized that if they gobbled up the other one, that they could survive. And so there are all of these energies that have actually taken place. They have taken place through uh, a law of magnetism. So sometimes something comes to us, we can dis discuss it in humans' terms, something comes to us and we're attracted to it and it's attracted to us, but we don't know what it is. You know? Well, the same occurs in the cosmos uh, that uh, opens the sleeve because there's just an infolding between one universe and another universe. You know? or, or one galaxy and another galaxy. Uh, there is an interface, there are those connections. And magnetism, I would say magnetism is purpose. But you don't know that purpose beforehand. In other words, there is, we talk about in human terms, free will. You know, you put two things together and then you'll see what happens. Whether it's two relationships or, or uh, uh, carbon and, and oxygen. You know, what happens when you put them together? And it's so important to begin to explore those cosmic uh, levels of magnetism because here we are beginning to wonder about and uh, hunger about and lean towards the possibility of other forms of life that not only, I, I am smiling because scientists are now saying, well, you know, uh, on Mars you could live under the surface. Well, the surface of Mars, like the surface of Earth, is underneath the surface. It's very, very busy with living beings. Uh, not all life holds the same laws that we have, but there are those intersecting points that attract us. So what's happening to us right now is that we are being attracted into cosmic energies which have no words. And we may not be able to smell it, but we know it somehow. Why do we know it? Because we're the same atoms. And here we are, at a, at a point in which we're being bombarded by atoms that are crystalline form, you know, that are the source of light, not just the result, the burned off part. And so there's a magnetism that's going on in the cosmos, and we are feeling it in Earth uh, in ways that, that uh, uh, somehow are familiar but unexplainable to us. And I think it's very important to imagine for ourselves our own magnetism, whether you want to attract a partner, or whether you want to attract money, or you want to uh, have something pull you in a direction.
but to begin to sense that these are laws of energy that do have to do in terms of chaos. It's like chaos is spitting in every direction. No, no, it's purposely spitting in every direction because motion is like uh, shaving something. If you pass through the cosmos, uh, just like our cells right now passing through uh, the tail of a comet, our planet and our consciousness and even our physicality is being shaved. It's, it's being peeled in some way that allows something else to come forward. And so the direction of energy has purpose. Uh, it's not true that in chaos there's an accident where two things collide. They collide because of magnetism. And so, you know, the word was coined in the 17th century or the 18th century or something like that, I believe in France. And uh, there was a lot of scientific study that was done about how does one particle uh, become attracted to another or repulsed. Uh, but there's something beyond that, as you're mm -hmm. discussing. And I would call that purpose. I call spiritual energy purpose because it has knowing. And so it wants to express itself. So the unmanifest will eternally come into form. We will always reincarnate. And the manifest will eternally dissolve into the unmanifest. Those are the laws of the cosmos. And even when it's moved into the unmanifest, its influence could change the direction of a planet. Uh, so we need to caress magnetism and to not just think, well, the great actor or the great... Uh, political being or someone else has his magnetism or charisma, but that it's innate in life. <clears throat> and of course, what we humans can't get is that a meteorite is alive. It has purpose. It has magnetism. Uh, because uh, there, there, is, there is energy in all mineral and, and every, in everything that takes form, there is life. And maybe that is the great mystery. So let's just do, uh, for a moment, a little short exercise in consciousness for you to give permission outside of do I dare or it's safer to be invisible or if I'm visible they won't like me or all of that small human chatter, but just to access for yourselves because there are no perfect words, but let's just take it up a notch and allow yourself to, to feel the connection to uh, a magnetism, a cosmic source of magnetism, <clears throat> which of course is a part of your sexuality, it's part of your intellect, it's a part of every aspect, visible and invisible, of the many bodies that you carry. So that you will, as you leave here today, be willing to say, yes, I am, I am that I am. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply into your body and ask your higher self, that intuitive essence of your soul, to extend your consciousness into the field of magnetic energies. You might see it in something that you know, like the ocean's tides or your own body or uh, cosmic meteorites or stars. But just let your higher self take you to uh, an opening, an awareness of the laws, cosmic laws of magnetism, to show you one point of reference, just one point of reference at this moment of magnetism at any level. To see what it shows you. Breathe deeply and just allow your consciousness touch it. Just use your 70 senses to see how you can perceive it. Does it have weight? Does it have frequency that you recognize? Are there any other senses that you can utilize to recognize it, to acknowledge it?
ask your higher self to give you a tool which will allow you to amplify your own magnetism. Whether it's a magnetism that relates to the cosmos or to other beings or to your physical body. It could be a symbol or an object or a color that your higher self gives to you to build that frame of reference. Just whatever it is, symbol, object, color, draw it into your body. Command the trillions of cells of your body to hold that tool that will open. Support your magnetism and therefore the evolution of your soul your purpose. And take a deep breath and to open your eyes. Now we might go back to that conversation, but my higher self has said something that wants me to deliver up here. And that is in talking about chaos and magnetism. It isn't that two particles come together and the purpose is what they're going to create because there's, a, there's an illusion of time with that. What happens is the magnetism creates the flicker. At the moment that the magnetism comes into play, it's already done. It's not in the motion, it's not in space, it's not in time and space that occurs there. And so maybe that's why humans have been very confused about chaos. Uh, because there's a purpose in it, but it's not a future purpose. It's a, it's a complete, unlimited, infinite potential that's there. But the moment that the, that whatever, that frequency that, that would cause that comes into play, it's done. This is true in human relations as well. And in all things. And how we send light, right? And how we send light. <coughs> the moment at the frequency of light, the speed of light, the moment that you send it, it's done. It's, it's done. It's that fast. And that's why you might be sending light and suddenly that light changes color. It changes color because there's already a response at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And there's negative space-time frequencies of light as well. And uh, I think as we go into the photon and we begin to s discover the increments, which are the basis, the building blocks of light itself, we will actually access speeds that are beyond what we've mm -hmm. seen before. For example, white is the fastest frequency that we know. And there are more than 200 shades of white, many of them invisible to us. Radiation, it's like gamma radiation, alpha radiation, beta radiation, it's all light. We're made of light. So, just like that, the second that you, that you hear or get that awareness, oh green, oh red, oh white, it's done. It's done right there. And it's very exciting when we begin to practice that and witness it, that it is indeed done. Anybody have any interesting um, experiences with that magnetism that you would like to share? There's no right or wrong, you see. There's no, it's this way at all. Yes? Well, the heart is the largest biomagnetic generator in the That's body. That's right. 40 to 60 times more so than the brain. That's right. And um, I just saw a like a river coming out of the heart and feeding all of the hearts. That's what oh, I saw. Beautiful. Yeah. And so, of course, the giggle, the cosmic giggle is, and what is feeding your heart? <laughs> that's 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 exactly. And you have to drink from the river, too. Yes, that's right. That's why in our work, it's, we always bring it from the cosmos so that you're never depleted and you're never bound karmically by the IOUs of karma the back and forth uh, of karma, but that there is something that facilitates that. There's something that facilitates the heart. The brain just records that. The heart does that. And this is why we are on that brink, because we are pulsing heart energy out into our solar system and out into the cosmos, and conscious energies are attracted and magnetized to that. Thank you. Wonderful.